Good morning from a sunny but very blustery day here on our allotment in Worcestershire. In our last video we showed you that we got some chickens. Again, I love chickens and I just couldn't not do it. But in this video I'm going to show you what we've done to protect our coop and our run from our natural predators, mainly foxes. Now at the moment in the UK we have avarian flu restrictions so we also have to protect against our local native birds as well from mixing with our flocks plus foot dips and other precautional measures to stop the spread of avarian bird flu. Now all this information that you need to start your own flock here in the UK is found on the government website. It gives very clear and precise instructions of what you must do to help protect your chickens in this outbreak. Let's have a look around and see what we've done to protect our running coop. So this is our chicken coop. It's about 10 foot by 5, maybe 6 foot. And we have some roosts which they've actually started to use. And there's plenty of space in here for them to be able to flap their wings and have some natural behaviour. Now in these, these are the nest boxes which they are actually using. I've just used a little bit of leftover hessian that I had just to create a little bit of seclusion for them because they prefer to have a little bit of a darker place to nest. Now as you can see, it's working very well. These are just old crates that we've cut the fronts off and put some hay on the inside. Now in general you don't need this amount for this amount of chickens on nest boxes but I find if I give them plenty of places they'll find somewhere more likely they're all happily to lay. And the good thing about these nest boxes is that they literally just pull out and I can clean them, disinfect them with water because they are plastic. At the moment I've got basic waterers and feeders but I'm going to build bigger feeders and waterers today. Now a couple of little tips when keeping chickens. The bigger the coop the better. Now I'm talking height as well as size of the floor space simply because it makes it so much easier to clean. If you're trying to clean out a coop that's inaccessible and you can't get into all the places to clean it it becomes a nightmare very very quickly. So having something that you can stand up in or completely take the roof off to be able to access all areas makes chicken keeping so much easier. Chicken coops also need to be dry. The last thing you want is any bedding to get overly wet where it then becomes mouldy and becomes a respiratory issue for your chickens. So making sure that your roofs don't leak and are not too drafty but you do need air to be able to flow through your chicken coop. Now sometimes, even when you have got nest boxes, you'll find that some will lay in an area that's not really suitable. But that's okay, because eventually they will move on to the nest boxes. Now we use a barn door approach, where it's two doors protecting the actual coop. Now the reason I've got this barn door, when it gets very, very hot in the summer, because it's south facing, this may cause some issues. So I can open the barn style door to get into the actual coop, or I can actually leave the main door open and have this area for a little bit more ventilation. Now to stop the birds flying out or any wildlife or birds flying in, I've used a netting. Now it's not the prettiest of things, but it works. Now that will stop the birds flying out or any wild birds flying in. But it will also give the coop plenty of ventilation. Because the last thing you want is to cook your chickens. Unless that's what you're actually breeding them for. So that's the inside of our chicken coop. Quite simple. But we've tried to give them as much space as what we actually possibly could. Because there might be some times that we can't get down to the allotment. On the chicken coop we've used galvanised steel mesh on the outside, on the top of the outside and then 
pallets on the bottom and we've used old dog crates and actually nailed these into the sides of the pallets to actually make it even stronger against foxes. We've also got wire mesh on the bottom that goes around down about two, two to three foot in places. This will stop the foxes being able to dig under the pen. And we, at the moment, because of avarian flu, we've had to put on this builder's mesh just to stop birds getting in. Because we have to keep wild birds away from our chickens. The roof is made from plastic sheeting and some builders, builders netting at the moment. This roof is going to be completely enclosed in plastic so they have a nice dry area to come outside in. Keeping chickens is not hard, but it's like we're keeping any animal. You must keep the area as clean as possible. Now there's several methods to do a litter approach inside your coop. You can use a few inch layer and spot pick the poop off the floor, or you can use what's called the deep litter method. In this way, you literally, if it's really, really messy, sometimes you can get rid of some of that, but you literally normally just put wood shavings over the top of the poop into a few centimeters depth. And this will compost down eventually over time, meaning you only have to clean the coop two to three times a year. Now, I quite like the deep litter method because it actually starts rotting down the fantastic chicken poop down for the garden. But all the chicken poop and all the sawdust is actually going to go into our compost bins before it goes anywhere else. So I'm not 100% sure which method I'm actually gonna go for yet. Now, when it comes to chicken feeding, you have to make sure that you're giving the correct types of feed. Now, my chickens are all at point of lay, so we're having layer pellets at the moment. As for breeds of chickens, there is chickens to suit pretty much every scenario. There is some chickens that are happy to be in a smaller area. There is some that needs a larger foraging area. There's some that are friendly, some that are certainly not. And obviously roosters are a completely different matter altogether. As for watering your chickens, they must always have access to fresh water. Now I'm going to build a bigger watering canister and put it into the actual coop itself. Now as for the feeder, because I want to be able to put as much food in place as possible in one go, I'm going to use this container. Now it has been disinfected and cleaned out and I've also bought some chicken ports. Now these are the chicken ports. Now the chickens will poke their head through this hole and their heads reach to here where the feed is at the bottom. So I'm just gonna drill my holes. Now with this, you need a weatherproof seal. Even though we've got this in the coop and it shouldn't be getting wet, we've got them so we might as well use them. And then this just goes in. Make sure the hole's pointing down and screw it on. Now I'm hoping this feeder will allow me to keep more feed down here at a time. So if we ever want to go away for a few days, it's actually easier to get someone to come in and just let the chickens in and out. Eventually I will get an automated coop door though, which will make life so much easier. I've now got my ports in my tub and they also come with a little cap which you can actually plug up for the night time to stop any vermin getting into your chicken feed boxes which I think is a really good idea. Now this will have to be raised a little bit in the chicken coop so the chickens can comfortably get their heads into the holes so I'm going to have to build a little frame or raise it up on some bricks so it's a comfortable height for the chickens to get their heads in there. Yeah. 
If keeping chickens or having an allotment or growing your own food is something of interest to you, why don't you like and subscribe? This will keep you informed of all future videos coming to our channel.